Logitech has been doing the gear driven G wheels for decades and now they have sent this for review their first direct drive and their first set of load cell pedals. A little bit of background as you know Logitech since the Jurassic periods have been doing the Logitech G25 in one way or the other every so often releasing small updates. The last iteration the G93 added something called TrueForce basically a haptic system that would send vibrations based on what the force feedback is doing. TrueForce felt like a gimmick but on top of an aging system and product line. Logitech knew this and they wanted to release something for their highest line which is the Pro line. The G-Wheels will still be sold so the Logitech G93 but they wanted to compete with more established direct drive and load cell brands. What we have here then is the Pro Wheelbase and Wheel and the Pro Pedals. The Pro Wheelbase is a direct drive with 11 Nm, a proprietary quick release and true force and this will be important later. The pedals are totally a new design with a 100 kilo low tail and hall sensors. Now for prices, you really need to hold on to your socks. The wheelbase will only be sold with the wheel and will have a cost of $999 or 1,099 euros. For the low tail, it will be $350 or 389 euros. There are two flavors of this space, one for the PlayStation and one for the Xbox. Physically, they are exactly the same. The one I have here is the PlayStation because I wanted to check out Gran Turismo 7 with it. I mean, the price is really not either here or there for the wheelbase. Maybe it's on the expensive side. A 11 Nm direct drive wheelbase and wheel set will go around for 1000. The most comparable system, the Alpha Mini, will be slightly cheaper when a round wheel is added. The Mozza R9 and CSLDD could even have a pedal cell thrown in and would be in the price bracket, even if they are slightly less powerful. Like always, in a DD market, it's not just the power, but also the experience provided through the driving, but also through the software. Logitech really wants to give an awesome experience and is doing so in a way that even so it's totally a new product, it has a lot of familiarities with the G923 and I mean this in a really good way. Before going to the unboxing and testing, let me tell you that this unit is not the first one that I've received. The first one actually got bricked during a firmware update using G-Hub. That was a critical alarm on G-Hub, then the wheel got stuck in a loop that wouldn't recover from and it was impossible to recover the wheel. I had to deliver this wheel back and get a new one in a hurry and then the other wheel was sent for diagnostics. Logitech didn't disclose the fault that happened to the wheel, they were able to recognize it and apparently it's now fixed on the G-Hub side of things so they have very likely uh, done a new update for the Gia by the time this wheel is launched. The pedals have a totally different design from everything out there. At the price they are they really need to bring a lot to the table and do they have some tricks because the pros will be competing with the likes of the V3s and the SRPs from Mazza. The direct drive box is huge, opening it up will have a covering card that doubles as a quick guide. Inside both wheel and wheel bases are well protected with foam and inside a cotton bag. There's this little side box with a 300 watts power brick, cables and inside a small compartment the clamp. On the pedal side, same type of deal, the pedal is already assembled and then there's a couple of sleeves. On one of them you'll have the cables and a manual and then on the other side a tray with elastomers and another one with springs. Let's have a look closer look then starting at the wheelbase and as you can see this thing is huge. Here it is compared to the DD1. Here it is compared to the Mozza R9 and now we're here it is compared to a BMW M8. This thing is enormous. This wheel construction is mostly made out of very hard high quality plastic but it feels sturdy. From what I'm told, all the decisions made around this wheelbase were conclusions reached after checking with hundreds of direct drive users. In the case of the torque of the wheel, decided 11 Nm because almost everyone used under 10 and they turned it up to 11. These go to 11. On the front, we have uh, the QR, which is made out of a very strong billet metal. And you see the connectors over here, the connections on the side of the wheel will be spring loaded so there won't be any kind of situation where uh, the connectors might get stuck and while we have a qr over here this wheel will only rotate 1080 degrees as far as i know it's the only wheel of this type that comes with this type of limitation every other direct drive that i use we have uh, unlimited rotations and the reason why this happens i am told is that because they connected the true force cables to the shaft of the direct drive and if they had unlimited rotations 
it would mean that the cables will snag and break. At the bottom, we can see the mounting. The mounting is made out of metal, very strong metal, very thick metal, and it comes in this triangle shape. These two on the back are the same as the Logitech G wheels, and most rigs and wheel stands should have it. This one on the front, I'm not so sure. My K2R generally has compatibility with everything. It doesn't have this one at the front. And I assume because I've heard the same from Will from uh, Boosted Media, uh, this one at the front is not compatible with uh, some uh, sim rigs that he has at home. I've tried to use this both ways in my sim rig, only attached at the rear, which is not optimal. Uh, the wheelbase will lift a little bit. So what I decided to do then was remove the front part that will then uh, uncover the position for the wheel clamp. And then you can use the wheel clamp on your sim rig. While still not optimal, it definitely secures it very, very tightly to the sim rig. On the back, we can see this big exhaust, which will be to remove all the air from the inside. But I also suppose it is for the transducer of the true force system. And then we have a micro USB connector that will be connected to your PC or to your PlayStation. Three USB A's. This is not a hub. This is a proprietary system. And then we have the plug over here for the power. The power plug uh, insert is not very good. The slightest of tugs will see it come out and disconnect the wheelbase. So make sure you have everything like tidy and connected so there aren't any tugs when you move around in your sim rig. Because of the QR and because of the USB-A, I would assume there will be a wider ecosystem. I've tried to get that information out of Logitech, but you know they kept everything under wraps. So I suppose because you know they weren't direct with saying no, we will see a larger ecosystem from Logitech. For those of you who still have the pedals from the Logitech G Wheel series and also on the shifters in 2023, there will be an adapter that will make them compatible with this wheelbase. This wheel is fantastic. But first, let's look at the QR. And it does look like Fanatec, but you just slide it in and then it engages in a very, very strong way. There's no wobble and to remove there is no wiggle. It goes back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth like butter. From a user perspective, it is up there with the Motsis, which is really, really good. This is definitely a wheel that I'm a fan of. I like the layout. I like the size, how sturdy it feels. All the buttons at the front have this really great positive click, including the rotaries over here. It smells heavenly too. That letter, when it's new, it's a really great smell, and it's possibly the first a uh, sim racing review where, you know, the scent of something is actually being said. But I digress. In total, we have 11 buttons. This is an eight directional D-pad, two rotaries with the click. These rotaries are fantastic. They have the perfect type of actuation force for me. I just wish they kept the regular PlayStation layout and would make the rotary symmetrical. So either on this way or on this way, but they are usable and they are so, so good nonetheless. At the back, we have magnetic shifter paddles, a dual clutch system that can be assigned to whatever you want. And get this, it can be assigned as a handbrake from the software, which is useful in Gran Turismo, for example. Uh, the shifter buttons are okay. They're magnetic. I do wish they were a little bit stronger, but they do get the job done and the clicks are positive. The QR system is fantastic, but first, looks wise, it's very similar to a Fanatec QR, but with the difference that it's very easy to remove and very easy to insert and in movement wise it has very very little there's more movement coming in from the plate than it is from the qr this is the pedal set compared to the v3s and here it is compared to the death star these pedals bring features that i would like to see more in pedals i do like the design they look different in a very good way they're very slick with very good design cues they made the pedals beautiful with those polished surfaces you can see over here. It just contrasts really well with the plastic. Chassis is made out of polymer, which is a design choice that I don't really, really like. And there's also a design shortcoming that I see is that if you turn it around, there are, you know, good stuff over here. But if you see the mounting holes over here at uh, the middle, that means in certain types of uh, pedal mounts and sim rigs, uh, they will be only connected to on the center and that would leave this part over here hanging about uh, from the mounts like it happened on my Q2R, which means this starts to actually bend a bit. If you have a pedal plate that is complete, it won't be an issue. And in reality, it will make the pedal plates far, far sturdier. But in the case of 
certain newer pedal systems, uh, pedal mount systems, where it only uses two bars because it's the most minimalistic way to do it. And actually, generally, for most pedal sets out there, it's actually the best solution. This won't be optimal. Now, some of the side decisions, of course, they're very interesting. If you want to move these side to side, it, they are so easy. But the way that I found that they came tightened, it was not tightened at all. So it meant that the pedal faces will move side to side a lot. Uh, that happens because of the second shim. There are two shims for each bolt. The second shim is a little bit softer, so it needs to be torqued just a little more and will make everything a little better. Still, the pedal faces move about just a bit. And then over here on this side, this will be the connection area. That means if you want to remove one of these, for example, you don't want to use the clutch, uh, you can remove the clutch easily, remove it from the, the base and then connect it to your wheel stand or whatever if you don't want to use it. So in terms of usability, it is quite simple. Anyways, the big deal with these pedals is not just the simplicity of moving it to side to side, which is good. In terms of construction, you know, they still move a little bit side to side. They're not bad at all. But, you know, at this price, you should expect a little bit better. But there is something that I found really interesting. If you really want to change your elastomers, it's essentially toolless elastomers or springs. Just pull it back and there they come. That's it. But now for this one, you do need to rotate this and the elastomers will be inside. And then you would need to tap this a little bit to, to release the elastomers and then change the elastomers and go, you know, put it this back in. Once you turn the wheel on, it will give you a select platform screen, which will have the selections PS5, PS4 and PC. Later on, you can actually configure this in the software to have a default or change it as you need it. So move up and down by using the rotary on the left or on the right, and then to select its click. Sadly, the buttons do not work the directionals. If you have a pedal connected to the wheelbase, you will see uh, the graphs that will have your input once you push your pedals. If you want to change how the wheel feels, you can do so on the fly, very similar to Fanatec. However, it's not as straightforward as Fanatec, for example. You press this button over here, but instead of using the left, right, up and down, and then the click to select something, you need to use the rotaries. It's not as easy, but it's not too difficult. If you want to go inside some profile, you can just press it, and then you can select the, uh, select the profiles. You can have your profile from the G Hub, or you can have your customizable profiles that you can use on a fly, for example, to change games. Inside, you can change the strength of the wheel, that will be measured in Newton meters instead of percentages, which is pretty cool. You can select your true force strength, uh, which is usable in some games like Assetto Corsa Competizione on a PC. Your dampeners, your angle, your brake force for the load cell. You can also select on the left and right paddle what they do. So you can use a, a clutch as, and the brake, or you can use it as an end brake, or you can just map whatever you want to the axis. You can change your clutch white point. You can change what will the LEDs do. You can do it of a left to the right or right to the left. You can also do it inside out. This wheel can be set on the compatibility mode with the G923. And you can also on startup, you can do exactly that. You can ask what platform are you going to boot this in, or you can just select one platform and leave it at that. Reminiscent of Fanatec, the wheel can be set up independently through the wheelbase and also through G-Hub, where profiles can be made. Some choices present at other brands are not here, like adding inertia or springs or even friction. The software I have access to as of this moment is a super secret squirrel mode of the G-Hub. I suppose these might be added later if there's a request for them. Anyways, like any Logitech G peripheral, the control of it will be at this G place. The first thing I noticed while doing any true force titles on a PC that I have, so iRacing and Assetto Corsa Competizione, is that when you move the car, it will start uh, dropping FPS. It also happens when you stop the car. In non-true force titles, it doesn't happen, and also it doesn't happen in Gran Turismo 7, which has true force. For me, the Pro Series is really a tale of two components, the wheelbase and the pedals. The wheelbase, for me, in my opinion, is truly transformative in the way that works with Assetto Corsa Competizione. It is by far my favorite force feedback at the moment working in this title. The true force, while it felt gimmicky, for example, on a G923, because it really felt, it was something that fell flat on its face. Over here with the pro wheel, 
it just gives you an extra dimension to the uh, force feedback of Santo Corso Impedizione in a way that I've never felt in any other uh, wheelbase, no matter who set it up, doesn't matter the brand. You go over curbs, you feel a lot of detail in a way that is not felt in other wheels, even when they have like a rumber motors in the, in the steering wheels, for example, uh, the Fanatex. When you have uh, small changes of the tarmac, it's felt so, so naturally and compelling in the in a wheelbase when you lock the front tires as well when you go ov over uh, your threshold of grip in the front and you start under steering you really really feel like the front tires are loading past its limit it, it is felt so naturally it doesn't feel chattery it doesn't feel like it's giving you a lot of information that you can then not decipher it is for me truly transformative in a set of Corsa competizione but then there are the pedals, and the pedals for me are really the weakest link of this uh, package. While they're not bad, they are not close enough at their price point to other offers in the market, no matter who does it. And honestly, even if you start going down in value, I much prefer the, the pedals, the brake pedals, for example, from the TLCM or even the the base CSLs, the load cells. It just feels that the, the pedal makes more sense. The closest comparison that I would have with this brake pedal would be with the Fanatec CSRs, which were great, but those pedals are about 10, 12 years old right now. And they had multiple upgrades. This brake pedal kind of feels like it is definitely losing something and it's quite difficult for me starting doing trail braking. It's not the bad pedal set, not at all. There's a lot of good things about it, but it just feels for the value, for the performance it gives me and the way it drives. I wouldn't buy it. Assetto Corsa is a good example of a non-true force title. It's a title that works very well with most force feedback systems. This one is no exception, and it is out of the level as any other direct drive out there. Semi-Cube, uh, Fanatec, doesn't really matter. It is at that level, it gives you a lot of confidence on the four seat back it has a lot of strength even though the 11 newton meters aren't you know as much as other offerings out there but you know the four seat back quality is absolutely tremendous the wheel that i'm using this wheel that i only have at the moment this this wheel is absolutely fantastic in terms of size and the qr with uh, the wheel just feels so sturdy. This type of size is actually my favorite. The 30 centimeter size for me is the, the, the right size for sim racing. Some people would like it bigger for other things or smaller or whatever, but for me, round wheels sitting on a sim, 30 centimeters is for me the right type of size. And the force feedback is so good. Let's mention the pedals again. While not bad, like I keep saying, for me, while doing trail braking down these mountain roads, it just feels like I don't have as much control as I do in other pedals of this price range. And I wish these rates were slightly stiffer as well, but fortunately you can change those springs very soon when people start selling third-party mods for this. But the distancing is, at the moment is actually really good. The the Ilto is actually pretty nice as well. The pedals are actually comfortable. They're really not that bad. It's just the price. It's too much for what they provide in terms of performance. Even in Assetto Corsa, this thing... This wheel... Ah, oh man, I think as it is I, I still prefer it to almost everything out there even in Assetto Corsa this wheel is is absolutely brilliant you do need to raise a bit of filtering for this game otherwise you're just gonna start feeling a lot of chatteriness because this game has a lot of information coming out that it is not filtered and sometimes feels really strange. You don't add any filtering on uh, the direct drive wheels. And it just feels so, so nice. The second scenario for Assetto Corsa is drifting. I assigned the handbrake to one of the clutch paddles, something that is quite useful. 
and the way you set up this wheel for a set of course it needs to be of course completely different but especially on drifting because it feels like it's super sensitive to all the information that comes from the physics engine to the point you need to add quite a considerable amount of dampening in this case about 30 percent otherwise you're just going to have this wheel going left to right left to right and you feel a lot of chatteriness on the force feedback so you need to lower or actually raise the the dampening in order to make it usable for drifting and it in order for it to make to feel smooth one thing that i've noticed is that when you start moving it around a lot the wheel on drifting and i suppose it would be the same thing for rallying is that you really start to engage uh, the rotaries to the point that I'm thinking they should have like a sensitivity setting for the rotaries that it wouldn't engage in every single click, but every two clicks or something like that. This way it would definitely help with uh, mis-selecting, uh, you know, traction control settings on the smallest of touches. But for drifting performance, this thing is super, super smooth and feels really natural. I just wish I drifted better. Gran Turismo with the desk or Gran Turismo and a desk separately will be definitely two of the most popular situations by using this wheel. This wheel comes with a clamp on the box like I've shown. And as far as I can see, this clamp is absolutely brilliant. While I'm on a desk that is really not made to be a desk, this is a, a kitchen countertop that I've adapted to be a desk. You know, very popular IKEA pack. The desk does move around, but the clamp stays still very, very sturdily. You just need a couple of turns and basically that's it. Once the, the pads and the desk connect, just need a one or two turns. That's basically it. The clamp gets the wheel really, really stuck. It doesn't move. Well, the desk moves, the clamp and the wheel doesn't. This is way better than the CSLDD stock clamp. Way better. Now, because I'm on a desk, I do have to lower the force feedback uh, strength to about 50, sorry, 5 Nm, which still gives a lot of detail. Actually, it gives basically the same detail not that much force and the speaking of force this game is a true force enabled title and just like with the g923 even though it felt more gimmicky like right there over here it's just such a nice experience once again you do need to lower the true force engine quite significantly to about 10 to 20 Otherwise, you're going to start to feel a lot of chatteriness without giving you any relevant information. But the force feedback in Gran Turismo 7 is absolutely brilliant. I really need to recheck uh, the force feedback on other titles because in the beginning of the year when this game was launched, I had trouble with every single wheel that I've tried. Logitech, Panatech, every single one of them just felt a little bit smudged. And now the force feedback is really well connected. And the details are absolutely tremendous with True Force. Man, you really feel those tires working. And going over the curbs. Yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. This title, this wheel won't work totally with uh, Gran Turismo Sports. In reality, Logitech is not supporting that title. It will probably work in compatibility mode quite well i'm not sure i don't have sport installed anymore I, I have a four and i don't have any space in a in a console to try it out this was made for gran turismo 7 and you really feel that it was made for a gran turismo 7 as for the pedals the pedals are now on the floor that was another thing that i want to try it out and because the how long of the pedals are it's very hard to tip them over you do need to in this circumstance to to lower the brake force otherwise you're just going to be thrown back with uh, a chair like this, like I have. I do have a couple of shoes in a chair, so it doesn't move back that much. But because of how long it is, it's very hard to tip over even at, I would say even at higher brake horses. It's super stable on the floor and you really 
feel that this pedal set is made with that in mind, being played on the floor in mind. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of the performance of the pedals, at least at their at this price, you can really see that they went through huge lengths to make a pedal set that is actually usable on a floor. I've used uh, others before that every time you would break, no matter what would be the, the force uh, applied to it, they would just, you know, tip over. And this one is definitely not the case. It's standing right now at the back of the wall. And from the position that I'm sitting, it's super comfortable, all of this system. So even though I'm going to use this, of course, on a rig, I could see myself, if I didn't, didn't have any rig, I could see myself using this on the, on the desk with no problem whatsoever. However, in my specific setup, I would definitely need to make some arrangements to make the desk system that I have a little more sturdy for a direct drive wheel. As it is for Gran Turismo and desk usage, I would give it 10 out of 10. It is absolutely bonkers. This new Pro Series is really a great start from Logitech. In terms of force feedback, in my opinion, it's really up there with the best, and when true force is enabled, it's really the best experience I've had. I'm not sure if it's the best force feedback out there, but it's definitely the one that for the most. Gran Turismo 7 on a PlayStation and Assetto Corsa Competizione on a PC were phenomenal to me. The torque is not the end all of all things, but it can be a calculation. The system feels sturdy, even if it doesn't look the parts like others do. That is really only important if looks are parts of your uh, sim racing experience or if you need something really, really compact because this wheelbase is huge. At 1099 euros, it will make you think twice if you should get one, especially because the ecosystem is, it is so small. And if you go for the PlayStation, you need to buy the pedals. But on the PC side, you have the likes of the CSLDD, the Mods R9, and the C-Magic Alpha Mini. That's at those prices, you are able to even get a set of load cell pedals. The wheel being 1080 degrees didn't cause me any problems at all. That is more than enough. Either that be in GT driving or drift. The force might be a strong point to a lot of people because it finally gives you something that is not a gimmick. It actually gives you an extra dimension. The force feedback, PlayStation or Xbox compatibility will also be something think about and that will lead me to my next point because if you really want to use this wheelbase on a console you need to get the pedals because the Logitech G wheel pedals are not compatible only these pro and I found these pro pedals especially at this price kind of underwhelming the performance for me was average they're not a bad set of pedals they have a lot of use cases on the floor they are actually fantastic probably the best floor pedals that i've ever used because they're heavy they're sturdy and they're long and they don't tip over but if you put them on the rig even the performance is average but the price really isn't i really love this wheel i'm not so keen on the price but it's not too bad and the pedals could be better especially at the price point if you want another option for pedals check out this video of the csl elites version 2. i want it to be a really good pedal set but it somewhat suffers of the same issue of the slightly inflated price